G'day everyone. Today we're going to go through how to diagnose a tachometer on this Z32 300ZX. One day it just stopped working and it hasn't worked since. I don't drive the car much, but every time I do, I don't have a working tachometer. So we'll go through all the steps of how to figure out what's wrong with it and hopefully fix it as well. Okay, the first and easiest thing we can do is check this diagnostic terminal at the front left hand side of the car. We take the black cover off and there is a single blade terminal in there where we can check the sensor that is driving the tachometer. It should give us a voltage between 1.5 and 5 volts depending on how far in the rev range we are. We need to hook a multimeter to it. We can use the earth and the battery. We put the positive at this terminal and we should read voltage. Every time we rev the car up, the voltage should increase from 1.5 all the way through to five volts if we redline the engine. If that voltage is all okay, our next step is to get to the gauge cluster and the tachometer itself. We need to take these two control pods out the side of the dash in order to get to the cluster. There are bolts underneath, two of them, and they hook in at the top where we can unplug all of the plugs and take the two gauge pod controls left and right out and away from the dash. Next, we can take the left and right pods out. There is a bolt at the top and two at the bottom. Take them out, remove the pods so we can get to the rest of the dash. There are two screws coming in from the bottom to hold the top cover. Take them out and remove the top cover. Under the top cover, there are two bolts we need to remove. The two wider ones, they do help to hold that cluster in. We need to drop the lower part of the dash. So behind this vent, there is a single screw we need to take out and two screws coming up from underneath so we can drop that section of dash down to our knees. This allows us to separate the plastic around the steering column. All the screws come up from underneath. Now the main shroud clips in these two square positions at the bottom. With the steering column plastic loosened, we should be able to pop it and lift it up. With that shroud moved forward, we can see it is still connected with wiring so we can unplug the left and right upper plugs. And them two plug receptacles just clip into the top of the cluster. We can just push them backwards and out of the way. Okay, now there are two more screws holding in the cluster at the bottom here, left and right. We can undo those and move the cluster out forwards. We can now roll the cluster over and see the three plugs that are supplying it with power. These three bolts here, they hold in the tachometer and they also supply it with power and signal. The power, signal and earth all come from this plug and they all group together in the bottom right hand corner. And here we are making sure we see that same voltage signal making its way to the cluster. I have a ground and I'm checking the signal wire here with the positive side of the multimeter. We see here, we've still got the 1.7 volts. And as we rev up the car, that voltage still increases exactly the same way it did at the diagnostic plug. We can also check to make sure the ground here is correct. That is the signal and ground in the same black plug and it is working perfectly. I've taken the screws out here that hold the tachometer in place and we are testing to make sure that there is voltage at each one of the positions on the printed circuit board. And there is, and that is okay. As you can see here on the speedo side, a lot of these bolts and washers are quite rusty. This car is a T-top and it is quite likely there's been a bit of moisture inside this cabin over the last 35 years. And a lot of this hardware is starting to corrode. So everything else is okay, let's remove this gauge. There are two small screws here in the clear plastic we need to remove. And of course, we've taken the three screws out the back as well. I checked out the back of the circuit board for the tachometer. Everything looks good. There's no burnt out sections. All the solder is intact. There's no physical reason why this tachometer shouldn't work. So using three wires, some eyelets and some insulating tape, we're gonna test this gauge to make sure it works and we can test it using the diagnostic pin on the car itself. I have ignition on the positive side of the battery. I have ground on the negative side of the battery and I have the signal plugged in to the diagnostic signal that we tested earlier. And apart from being a little bit bouncy because it is laying on its back and the engine is creating a bit of vibration, the gauge is working perfectly fine. It's idling a little bit high because the car is quite cold and I'd expect it to do that, but the gauge is working how it should. So what did I do from here? I made sure I buffed all the rust of all three bolts and the washers to make sure that the current can travel through the washer and the bolt. They were quite rusty and I think the rust was inhibiting any kind of current traveling to the tachometer. I also added some of this dielectric grease, which is a rust inhibitant, but it also allows electrical conductivity to allow current to flow through into the gauge and allow the gauge to work. 
And that worked for me. Hopefully any of these steps can help you diagnose whether it is the signal, it is the printed circuit board, it's corrosion on the bolts, or perhaps it is your gauge that's not working. Thank you very much for watching.